In this video, we will talk about multivariable linear functions. And I want to begin with an example. So this example says a store's daily cost of selling G grain bowls and S salads is C of G comma S equals 4G plus 3S plus $160. Part A asks, if S is equal to 20, what cost function does this describe? So it tells me that S needs to be equal to 20. So let's take as S is equal to 20. That means there's 20 salads. And let's plug that into the function. That'll give us C of, I don't know what G is. Let's keep it as G, G comma 20. And plugging that in, we'll get 4G plus 3 times S. And we're plugging 20 in for the S plus 160. And if I simplify, we get C of G comma 20 equals 4G plus 60 plus, whoops, 60 plus 160, which is 220. And then it asks us, well, what cost function does this describe? So we should describe what this means. So what this means is the store's daily cost of, now the only variable in this is G, so of selling G grain bowls is, and I'll make a note of, well, what S is. The fact that we plugged in S is 20 means that uh, we're assuming that the number of salads is fixed at 20. So I'll, I'll make a note of that at the end of this sentence. So the store's daily cost of selling G grain bowls is 4G plus 220, what are the units, dollars, dollars, if the number of salads is fixed at 20. And that's our answer that describes this cost function. All right, so now let's do part B of the question. And part B is asking, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit for this so I can still see my cost function. Find the marginal cost of a grain bowl and of a salad. All right, so let's begin with a grain bowl. So let's talk about a grain bowl marginal, I'll just abbreviate marge, period, cost. So let's remind ourselves what marginal cost is. It's the cost of one more grain bowl. And in this case, because there's another variable, salads, I need to keep the number of salads fixed. So if the number of salads is fixed. So let's just play around with a few values. And then eventually it'll be become clear, like what part of the function do we look to to tell us this marginal cost? So up above, we had fixed the number of salads to 20. So let's keep that the case. Let's keep the number of salads 20. And let's try a few values for G. So let's say G is zero first off. And if G is zero, the cost would be equal to four times zero plus 220, which is 220. If I plugged in G equals one into the cost function, we'd get that the cost is four times one plus 220, and that's 224. Let's do one more. If G is equal to two, then the cost function would be four times two is eight. Eight plus 220, that's 228. So each time this cost function, each time I increase the number of grain bowls by one, is going up by four. And even here, it's going up by four. And it turns out that no matter what value of S that I were to plug in, anytime I increase the value of G by one, the cost goes up by four. So the marginal cost for grain bowls is equal to 
$4. It is not changing no matter what value of S is plugged in and what value of G is plugged in as long as I'm just increasing G by one. Okay. And we might notice that this increase, this $4 increase, was the coefficient of G in the original cost function. And that's not a coincidence. I'll, I'll come back to that later. But we can use that to figure out the, the marginal cost of, whoops, of salads quickly. So the salad, whoops, salad marginal cost would be, what's the coefficient of S in this equation? It's three. Okay, that's the salad marginal cost. Let's highlight this in a different color. So three is the same as this coefficient right here. So I want to end this example by noting something, which is, oh, whoops, I want to write. This coefficient trick, where I can just say that the marginal cost is the coefficient, only works if cost, if our cost function is what's called linear. And we'll define what a linear function is right after this. Alrighty, so let's give the definition. A function f of n variables is linear if, so I'm writing f and then inside of it I have n variables, which I'm calling x1 and then x2, and then I put a comma, dot, 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 comma, and then the last variable I'm calling x sub n. So it's linear if it has the form a naught plus ooh, a1 x1, there's that first variable x1, plus a2 x2, there's that second variable x2, and then plus dot, 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 plus a n x n, and that is the nth variable, x sub n. So in this formula, a naught, a1, a2, comma, dot, 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 up until a n are just constants. So they're just some real numbers. So one example of a linear function is the one that we did right before this. It was c of g comma s equals 4g plus 3s plus 160. So notice that there's a coefficient in front of each of these variables. In front of g, there's a 4. In front of the s, there's a 3. The power of each variable is just 1. So it's not g squared or s to the 5 or square root of s. The power of the variable is 1. And then there happened to be this extra constant term that didn't have a variable, this 160. And in terms of the general formula, that's that a naught, that constant that's just by itself when no variable attached to it. So notice the similarity between a linear function like this and linear functions of a single variable. Those were things like f of x equals 3x plus 7. That was a linear function of one variable. I could also think of this as y equals 3x plus 7. And we definitely know that's the equation of a line. Alrighty, so let's give one more example. So I could have more variables. Maybe I had a function of four variables like a, b, c, and d. And maybe this was 7a minus 3c plus d. So again, it's got that same format. There's no b in this output. And that can happen sometimes. Sometimes one of the variables that's being inputted just doesn't show up in the output. So the fact that there is no b term means that its coefficient is zero. And let me put some quotes around that b. So there's no b term. So let's look at another example. So in this example, we're going to be given some data points and we're going to be asked to come up with the equation of the linear function. 
So suppose that the SCU bookstore's weekly cost of selling X notebooks and Y sweatshirts is linear with the following data points like C of 2 comma 1 equals 58 and so on. So there's two other uh, values like that. And it asks us to find C of X comma Y. So before I get into this, before we get into the solution, I just want to point out that in the real world, there are plenty of functions of, of more than one variable. Just in terms of business examples and, and things like cost functions, often a store or a business's costs don't just depend on one quantity. There are multiple items that all contribute to their costs. And this simple example, it's the notebooks and the sweatshirts, but in a more real world scenario, the bookstore would have a lot of other costs, like the cost of paying for employees to work there and the cost of all of their other items. So there are many variables that they're dealing with that contribute to the cost function. Okay, so how do we do this? We're trying to find this cost function. So let's just start off by writing down the general formula for this cost function. So C of X comma Y is linear, which means it's gonna have the form, maybe some constant out in front, I'll call that A naught, plus some X term, so I'll write x, and there could be a coefficient in front of the x, which I'll call a1, and then some term with the y, and I'll call its coefficient a2. Okay, so let's let this be the cost function. And now I can plug in my data points. And if I do that, if I plug in this first point, this is saying x is 2, y is 1. And when I plug those in, my cost is 58. Okay, so I'm going to get... A naught plus A1, and then what do I plug in for X? Well, X is two. So in fact, let's just write that as two A1, two A1, and then we're plugging in one for the Y, so that'll give us plus A2. And that needs to be equal to 58, because 58 is the cost when X is two and Y is one. Okay, so I'm gonna label this equation. I'm gonna call it equation one. If I plug in my next data point, now my cost is 62. And uh, when I plug in, I get A naught plus four times A1 plus one times A2. And I'll call this equation two. And for the third data point, if I plug that in, I'll get 78 equals A naught plus three A1, because X is three, plus 3a2 because y is also 3. And that's my third equation. And from here, I have a system of equations. I have three equations, three unknowns. I don't know a0, a1, and a2. So we use some of our algebra knowledge to solve this. So we can do things like uh, add equations together or subtract equations or multiply an equation by something and then add or subtract or, or substitute all of those techniques. So one thing I notice is all of these equations just have a naught by itself at the front. So if I subtract two of the equations, the a naughts will cancel. So for example, if I do equation two minus equation one, and I'm just writing these numbers here to label my work, so it makes it easier to follow my system of equation solving, I'll get 62 minus 58 on the left, which is four. And on the right-hand side, when I subtract, I'll get a naught minus a naught, which is zero, four a one minus two a one, which is two a one, and then a two um, minus a two, which is also zero. So the only variable in this is a one, and I can divide by two to isolate it, and we get a one is two. So nice, we got one of our answers. So let's take that and let's plug that into the other equations. So let's plug a1 equals 2 into equation 2 and equation 3. So plugging into the second equation, we get 62 equals a0 plus 4 times 2, because that's a1, plus a2. And if I plug it into the third equation, we get 78 equals, uh, whoops, sorry. I had written a1 here when this should have been a0 at the front. A naught. Okay, in the third equation, we get A naught plus 3 times A1 was 2, 
plus a2. So before I so uh, solve this further, let me just make one quick comment about uh, this term right here. So I've been using this phrase a not. Uh, so in words, that's a, and then I say not, which is spelled like this. And that's just an old English phrase. So not is like an older English uh, word that refers to zero. So it's, it's typical math convention instead of saying a zero, which is okay, we could also say that, uh, to say a not, a not, which is why I'm saying a not. All right, so back to our solving. So we have these two equations. Actually, what, you know, I messed up in that third equation. I forgot to, I forgot to write that three in front of the a2. Let's fix that, okay. So I gotta be more careful there. All right, so now looking at these two equations, well, they both still have a not uh, the same at the front. So I can use my subtraction trick to cancel them. So if I subtract, I'll do top one minus the bottom one. I'll get 62 minus 78, that is negative 16, equals zero, and then eight minus six, that's two. A2 minus three A2 is minus two A2. If we rearrange this, I'm gonna move the negative two A2 to the left. That'll make it positive, so positive two A2, and move the negative 16 to the right. So it'll become 18 when I add it to the two. And then I divide by that two and I get A2 equals nine. All right, so I know what A1 is. I know A1 is two. I know what A2 is. I know that it's nine. So I should be able to plug those in to any of these equations to figure out the third variable, A0. Okay, so let's plug. So I'm gonna label my work and indicate what it is I'm doing. So let's plug the fact that A1 is two and the fact that a2 is nine into, we could do any of these, but maybe equation one is what I'll pick. So equation one, let's zoom it out so we can see that. Let's see, we got 58 on the left. And on the right, we have a naught plus two times a1, which is two, plus a2, which is nine. All right, so if I simplify this, if I rearrange it, we get four plus nine here on the right added to the a naught. Four plus nine, that's 13. And if I subtract that over to the left, we get 45. So 45 equals a naught. All right, so now I know, I know my three coefficients. So I know the last one is 45. So I'm ready to write down my cost function. So c of x comma y equals, what was a naught? It was 45 plus a1 was two, so two x, plus a2 was nine, so plus nine y. And that's my cost function. In terms of our goals, we have done our second goal, which is describing multivariable linear functions. In the next video, we'll talk about some 3D geometry. So we'll talk about how to graph things like points and some basic lines and planes in 3D space.